Good morning from the Finance Dojo. On a Monday morning, it's Mike Magoo. Some crazy times in the crypto world. So I wanted to kind of like, I've had these arguments with friends and people from 2016, 17, all the way up through now. It's, you know, we're going on eight, nine, ten years, folks. Um, it might be time to accept that the stuff is here to stay. But I don't want to get snarky and I don't want to argue. I want to just kind of point this out as like a little primer for um, boomers and um, Gen Xers, people around my demo, who don't really get it, who still think it's scammy. And, and it, it is, in a sense it is, but you have to kind of clear your mind and, and pull this back and reestablish your focus on it without the perceptions of the past, without your prejudices towards Wall Street, without the things that you've been taught that may or may not be rational because you kind of been duped and lied to in a lot of ways. And um, so let me give you a quick um, idea on why I'm doing this, you know, why I'm doing this. And if you like this kind of content, please, and I do varied content from music to my hand pan stuff, art, um, politics, which I've tried to avoid completely, some financial stuff. And look, just disclaimer, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not a financial planner, but I am an MBA with like 24 extra useless uh, graduate credits. And I handle tax certiorari for school districts. I was a kind of a cheese in the bureaucratic world of business. Um, but at the same time, I honestly can't work out, I can't figure out tips on a check if they didn't put the gratuity down on the bottom or didn't have a wife or a girlfriend to handle it for me. So I don't know, there's a Gemini problem right there. But I can see the bigger picture. And one of the bigger pictures of crypto now is that it's been around long enough that it's fully established, it's fully integrated, fully ingrained and predictable in senses because it's cyclical. And so now that you've had a couple of cycles to see these things and we have charts and we have people who read them exactly like stocks and bonds, people who can tell exactly what your, what your um, restrictive points are, where's your point where you think it's going to change direction, you know, where's the candlestick mark on the chart, you know, there's puts, there's calls, there's options, it's all the same stuff. So just for a quick backstory, the three main coins let's look at, or let's look at the idea between them, there's Bitcoin, right, that's the big daddy of them all. And there's altcoins, and then there's meme coins. So Bitcoin is like, it's basically, think of it only as digital gold. That's all it is. Bitcoin is digital gold, right? It is a store of value. No different than a quarter, which is a store of, that's a 25, that's 25 cents of American US dollar. Um, it's one quarter of a dollar. That's the, the value of that token. That's what it represents. Same thing, um, a subway token in New York before they had Metro cards, the value, the, the token of value of that was one subway ride. That's it, you know, whatever the cost would be, like a forever stamp, where the stamps are 40 cents or 88 cents, we have a forever stamp, that token of value is one piece of first class mail. That's it, that's what it represents. So Bitcoin is a digital goal. Now what happened is, here's the birth, of, well, let me go through this, the, the coins first quickly, because I'm not scripting this, so please bear with me, accept the mistakes I'm going to make. But I think this will be informative and it'll demystify this a little bit for people our age who still see it as scammy, which it is in a sense, but so is Wall Street. So just, that's what I'm saying. Open your mind, you know, have have a coffee, have a, have an early beer, open your mind and, and, and hear it because it's going to be helpful. And at least you'll understand so we can argue from a place of, uh, of, um, strength and information rather than cloudy, more disinformation coming from a place of fear and, and um, sort of uh, cynical cynicism, which I'm a king of. So anyway, so Bitcoin is a digital goal. But remember, Bitcoin was developed during or really came to prominence after the biggest malfeasance of the financial industries. You know, we're still paying all that debt. There's a lot of this is all about the debt. Let's say we're at 70, 37 trillion now. That's higher than the market cap of any of these stocks or companies or Wall Street. It's an insanely, insanely high amount of money. And so our grandkids and kids and grandkids and their grandkids will be paying this back. We're paying it now. We're paying in our taxes to pay back Lehman and all that. Even if they say the banks paid it all back, but they didn't pay nothing back. We're paying the interest on that debt. And they paid it back and then the government took the money and spent it on other jobs. It never went back to the taxpayers, believe it. So we're paying for Lehman's malfeasance and all those other guys. And the big drop of 2008, the housing bubble. Did anyone get their money back? Apparently Lehman and Goldman, everybody else got their money back. I don't think you got your money back. I didn't get my money back. No, we had to work our money back or earn our money back or invest our money back. So one of the key things that I find funny about Bitcoin is that Americans, are, the people who are cynical about it are all Americans that I know. And yet Bitcoin is based on this funny American tenant called freedom. 
Just like gold was a store of value until we went off the gold standard in the 70s with Nixon. Why? Because of debt. So now the dollar went from being worth a dollar to being worth like three cents. And then you go, oh, Biden's fall for inflation. No, we've had inflation forever, runaway inflation. That's why all these investment vehicles like the stock market are designed to beat inflation because we know inflation is going to happen and we make it worse with the printing, printing of money and all this government nonsense. And then, you know, people want a place to invest where they can make something. So if a savings account is getting 2% or 3% and inflation's five, uh, where do you save? Where, how do you grow money? You can't grow wealth. You're just working on a treadmill. So the point is you've got to have some investments that can beat the cost of inflation or the pace of inflation. And the stock market has generally done that. And when it doesn't, they kind of make it to it somehow. But it could be, you know, seven, eight, nine percent, fifteen percent in the craziest years. It was it was not so so but a ten percent swing in the stock market will make people crazy, could create a depression, like a sell off or whatever. Ten percent in crypto is like <laughs> That's a, that's a walk in the tulips, kid. It goes up 26%, down 30%, up 50 It is a roller coaster of insanity. But you have to understand that going in because there's also more the risk is equal to the reward. You can make a lot of money. So the second of the coins, let's look at it this way. So you got Bitcoin, that's like a store of value. There's going to some coins like that. There's the USD or Tether or whatever they are. They're tied right to the dollar value. They're just, they want it to be utilitarian coins at some point. They probably never will be. But so Bitcoin, I don't care what governments, El Salvador or whatever, are using it for money or whatever. You can, it's okay. But basically in the alt currency world or cryptos, altcoins and stuff, there are technologies that are just going to blow, that already blow this all the way. They're doing so, see, I don't want to get into the blockchain because that's where it gets wacky and financial. But listen, I, you don't understand the internet either and you don't understand Wall Street either. So why would you expect to understand that? You don't go to MIT, you're not a brainiac wizard. I'm not either. So we're not designed to know the back end of this stuff. And the fact is, you know, the people with the money manipulate this stuff. Look, how are you going to beat Wall Street if you don't have quantum computing in your house. Like, I'm sure you can make good decisions, but how are you going to beat anyone to the price when these guys are all using quantum computing? They're making trades so fast by computer, there is no way you can get the best price. So to think that you're doing that is silly. It's funny. You're up against like these behemoths and yet we're like, so stock market good. Are you kidding? I mean, so I'm not trying to be mean. And if I'm being cynical, yeah, I'm being cynical because it, it, it kind of rob you. So the second layer would be, and sometimes they call them, actually some of the coins in that second layer are called first layer um, technologies because they are actually the first layer of new finance. This is part of this freedom thing is that we are globally connected financially. So all our governments kind of have us by the short hairs, no matter what. And there's this constant fear, particularly by the rich, that they will pull shenanigans with the financials again and make the dollar worth nothing and everyone's savings worth nothing and basically pull the rug out from everybody. And the poor and middle are like used to that. Oh, well, they beat us up. We'll work harder. <laughs> the rich don't play that, homie. They put it in Switzerland or they put it in the Caymans or they pack it into some sort of investments. They get it out of as close to out of the reach of the tax man as they can and out of the reach of potential you know government shenanigans so that's why gold was always the store but look today you know so gold is went up also parabolically but it's at 2500 roughly plus or minus i don't know exactly today it's been between 24 and 26 an ounce right but bitcoin is gone so so it took all these years for it to get to that Bitcoin in 10 years or 15 years has gone to 100, almost 100,000. Gold is predicted at the worst end, if things are terrible and there's recessions, gold will go to 3,000, which would be crazy. Bitcoin's already predicted, predicted under any circumstance, unless they change the constitution of it, which has 21 million coins, it's going to go up to a million. Probably by the time I die, it'll be between 500k and a million. That's a fact. It just is. It'll just keep doing what it does because, and here's the simple reason. I'll give you the very simple reason. There, are, if they follow, the only reason it wouldn't is if they don't follow their own constitution. And their own constitution calls for 21 million coins. Period. That's it, max. So no matter what, whatever their market cap is, market cap is how much money comes into a stock or a bond or a coin or whatever that financial instrument is, and the market cap grows. So if market cap gets to one trillion, which is not outrageous. I think Apple was at one trillion recently, right? Tesla might get to one trillion. So if it gets to one trillion, Bitcoin, which is already pretty close, that's like 400,000 a coin. So it's just math. It's going to happen. 
it can't not happen. However, it's gonna go like this on its way there. That's what the chart's gonna look like. But this is how the chart always looks, like this. So when you look at it in the long run, it's a parabolic rise. But you will go through, whoa, so crap, you know? It's not for everyone. But that's how you get these big, big quantities. So let's look at the second layer that we were talking about, which, like I said, some are first layer coins. Those are basically technologies. It's like IPOs in the old days. It's, it's investment in these technologies, but they're raising money through selling coins instead of stock because they don't want to be beholden to Wall Street. They don't want to be beholden to the SEC. The SEC is really trying hard to get their grips. The SEC has kept down XRP, Ripple, for seven years in court, in this and that, fighting it and fighting it, and Ripple won. And now Ripple is on a tear going up finally after seven years because they think it could be an Ethereum killer. It could do that. It has real applications, real applications to DeFi, which is a huge uh, genre of altcoins. They're in the de-finance business, which is basically they're trying to knock down this global finance crap or get around it because they don't want to be controlled by these governments and by their central banks. So this crypto is a way around the central banks. I could take all my Bitcoin or you could take all your stuff and you put it in a digital wallet, a hard, cold wallet they call outside of everything and no one could ever touch it. No bank, no government. They don't know you have it. They don't know what it is. It's like money in your mattress. However, if you have money in your mattress and they devalue the dollar, your million dollars in your mattress just went down to whatever they devalued it to. They can't do anything with this. This is in its own realm. The only way it devalues is if all the people who own it decide it's no good anymore and sell it. Then it devalues. No one seems to be doing that. In fact, it's going completely the other way with more and more institutional investors flooding in every day, driving that market cap up. And that is why Bitcoin keeps going up. Not because it's great or it's wonder or this. It's math and it's a reaction to Wall Street malfeasance and an intolerance to trust the government or financial global banks with your financial future or with the money you can build. Also, people like gambling. We have sports gambling now. And like I said, you know, what do you want to do? You want to bet your money that in 10 years it's going to go up 500 bucks or you want to bet your money in 10 years that it's going to go up $400,000? You're betting the same money. It's up to you. You know, the risk with gold probably is a lot less. It might not crash way back down. But I, what's Bitcoin going to crash back to? 20, 30,000? Hold it for four more years. It'll go right back up. That's what it does. It's on a four-year cycle. That's the thing that people are starting to figure out now, now that stuff's been around long enough, is that there is a four-year cycle for Bitcoin, and it's based on the halving. So with Bitcoin, because there's 21 million coins, they don't issue more coins, but there are scheduled halvings where they take all the coins and they split it in half. So if you own one at 100 bucks, now you own two at 50 each. And that's just sort of how they do it, and it, it, it kind of lowers the supply, and so it drives up the price to a degree, and it happens every four years. So that's why this is always the season. And one of the reasons it becomes a whole alt season, which I'm running out of paper, is because Bitcoin tends to rise, right? And it drags up the alt, which I'll explain again, the alt and meme coins a little until Bitcoin gets too dominant. And this is all cyclical. This has happened twice in a row, 2017, 2021, exactly like this. And it's gonna do it, it's primed all the charts to do it exactly again this year. And it's doing it, it's doing it right now today. So Bitcoin's going to hit like a ceiling eventually, maybe 110, 115, maybe 100. Might just be, might have made it, might be right around there, okay? And that will then, uh, it, it, it basically makes these stagnant because it dominates and it takes up too much of the oxygen and all the money. So when Bitcoin hits that ceiling, these people get out, but they wanna make money. So they're not gonna take all their money out, put it in the cat, put it into whatever, they put it into the alt and the meme coins. So Bitcoin starts to correct a little bit and these go up. And that's kind of what we're looking at right now. These all took a dive. They all went up crazy for two weeks and then took a huge dive this weekend. And a lot of people think that was a correction that was necessary to drive them up again. So we're gonna see what happens. But you know, when you look at the charts, they always go up and up. Like I said, Bitcoin, they always go up and up and up like this. They don't go, wee, it's, it's, painful you know it's it's a little stressful so you don't look at it that's why over four years you really don't want to look at it because you'll you'll bail you'll you'll be jumping through hoops all the time so an altcoin is these companies that are the new technologies the next microsoft the next amazon the next apple is going to be come from within those companies they're ai companies gaming companies um digital communication companies all kinds of these small companies um and they don't do secs or i i mean ipos for the sec to gather startup money. They 
issue a coin. <laughs> they issue crypto and they gather money that way. And because they're a digital enterprise, why do they care about the stock market? They want to be in a digital realm. So that's, that's their business. They're creating AI focused uh, apps to crush current banking, to make it faster to make these process, to process these moves, to make more money for people, to crank up the casino, quantum computing. This is all technology on a tear. So if you think this is all silly, you're 10 years behind. You think this doesn't exist, you're 10 years behind. People, are, there's kids getting, making millions and there's old people missing out. And you know, so I'm just trying to demystify a little bit for people. The meme coins are a whole nother thing altogether. Look at it this way. Okay, the meme coins, you take 100, 200, 500 bucks if you have money and you buy stupid stuff. Because the fact is, while Bitcoin can make a lot of money and altcoins can make a good amount of money, Meme coins can make an outrageously insane amount of money. <laughs> like, and you can lose everything in two seconds. But that's that's the risk of that. And some people like it. The young people love it. You know, and maybe the non-sports betters like it. Maybe it's mobile. Like it. But just know the perspective. Is it is it dumb? Of course. But so what? So I, I've had people pitch me. I just create. You know, I have people. I think I invested two hundred bucks once in this company that was using Australian. Uh, something that was it just Australian grapes or whatever or something to make their vodka and it had and then they also were making a cannabis uh alcohol company it was like a mix of cannabis and alcohol I was like can't miss <laughs> never heard from them again I was, you know, it's like it's still out there I still own this pre-IPO share but everybody's got a scam to, to earn some early money and get them into the game and it costs a lot to go public whereas to issue a coin didn't cost them a lot they don't have to put up a lot up front again they don't have to play into the institutional global banking game that's what this is this is freedom from the globalists my friends that's why it's going up and everybody's like oh it's ridiculous not everybody but people in my demographic are like I don't like it I don't trust it. I'll keep everything in my 401k, get my nice 3%. Good for you. <laughs> I'm happy for you, but I'm trying to tell you the difference. And it brings me back to an old facetious joke that in tattoo shops, there used to be signs that said, people with tattoos don't care that you don't have or like tattoos. Because <laughs> you'd always have that thing, oh, you got a tattoo? Did it hurt? Uh, uh, I wouldn't do that. Ooh, I wouldn't get it. I don't like tattoos. And it's like, well, who gives a crap? <laughs> don't get one because you you know, but we don't care. We like it. We got it. I paid for it. I like them. Some I do. Some I want to change. Some I do. Whatever the case may be. But it, no one cares if you don't. And the crypto is the same way. I'm demystifying something for you. So you, in the next three weeks, you can make easy, easy, easy money with some risk and a little bit of homework. But if you don't want to, that's fine. But don't keep spouting or do it if you want, who cares? But don't keep spouting these falsehoods and projecting your fear about something you don't understand that's been going on in the world for 10 years as though you're, you're, you know what you're talking about and in investing. Good luck. If you're making great money in the stock market, that's good too. Do it. Keep doing it. Do what you got to. 20 year olds, get money into the stock market, get money into everything because investments, you don't work your way rich. You invest your way rich. You work your way to the middle <laughs> and then you invest your way rich. The problem is we are so institutionalized that your job will tie you to your 401k and to your health insurance and you will stay on that treadmill forever and you will invest in poor vehicles because 401ks just don't have a lot of good choices. There's no crypto. There's not a lot of smaller caps. There's a lot of, you know, mutual funds with high fees. There's some ETFs now, and it used to be you had to pay for trades. At least now you don't have to. That's their idea of leveling the playing field, that retail people don't have to pay for trades anymore. You think that, you think that means that your trade's going as fast as like uh, you know, Renaissance partners, those mathematicians, hedge fund geniuses? Who are, you can't even get a job at the company if you don't have a million already in your investments. You know, those guys are sharks, whales, <laughs> killers. And you're at home going like, I'm going to buy some Tesla. Well, good for you. But I'm just saying, this is the Baccarat room, people. If you want to make the real money, man up, get yourself a, a whiskey sour and get into the Baccarat room. Because that's where the dough's at. But just understand it. It's no scammier than anything else. It's a reaction. It's freedom. It's a reaction to globalist economic banking shenanigans. And the fact that they, we, the rich people know they're going to be victimized and they don't plan on letting that happen. That's your hedge. That's all I'm saying. So peace out, have a great day. If you like this uh, at all, <laughs> information, I wasn't too snarky and mean today, please like, share, subscribe. I doubt anyone watched this far, but if you did, that really tells the algorithms that I'm the bee's knees. So uh, thanks, everybody have a great day. Take care of each other. Peace out, love you.